Small ball in the NBA is no longer a movement. It is the standard. Way before the Rockets went all in before Curry and Clay, there were the seven seconds or less sons. The captain of that crusade and the fifth member of our team, Steve Nash, sat down with coach Mike D'Antoni, not to celebrate this wild movement they started, but to wonder what if they had pushed it further. Today I get to meet up with my old coach, Mike D'Antoni. D'Antoni is an offensive genius, changing the way basketball is being played. He was relentless in pushing us to play with quick decisions, shoot threes, shoot early. That offense was nicknamed the seven seconds or less Suns. He was ahead of his time, wasn't he? Sure was. Playing for Mike was the best days of my career. Coach, this is, this is amazing, 15 years. What was the evolution in your mind? Like, what was your experiences that led for you to say, this is the way we got to play? I'd have old coaches say, you know, when you get in trouble, you go small. When you get really in trouble, you go smaller. <laughs> and just stuff like that just kind of stuck with you. And then, obviously, it's because of what you can do. Sean can guard a four. Mari could kill fives. And it's like, why wouldn't we do it? Yeah, hello, Amari Stoudemire elevates and detonates. Why did we as a basketball community not understand the math? 33% right. from, from three right. was better than 50% from two. Why didn't we know it? We were scared because every voice said, you cannot do right. that. You cannot win. And the reason we didn't win, we didn't go far enough. Right. And we kind of listened to uh, some doubters. And uh, we should have put the pedal down a little harder. In some ways, I think we limited our success by not playing quicker, by not shooting more threes, by not expanding our range. I think our Suns teams would be great in today's NBA. I mean, it suited us to play the style that's played predominantly by NBA teams today. So we went back toward more traditional, where if we'd have gone more untraditional, I, I think we'd have been Golden State before Golden State. It's almost like we, we reverted to make ourselves more ordinary right. instead of more and extraordinary. We did. <laughs> <Yeah>. Mission accomplished. <laughs> and that's why I'm out. Right, <laughs> you know, right, right. Screwed, I screwed it up. I grew up in an era where it was like, make your shots, don't take too many, no, keep no. your teammates oh, happy, yeah. make everyone feel good, encourage. But nowadays we know, as we see, you know, these point guards are, are out there to attack. That leads us to James. Here comes James. James with a big stop. James Harden, the best one-on-one -on -one player in the NBA, and it's not even close. How do you rank him as far as just a score? Just watching him night in, night out, uh, what, you, what he does. There is no way anybody's better offensively. One-on-one, -on -one, Harden and Sexton stepping right, tough three, it goes! What a tough shot! I mean, it's ridiculous. It's not possible. It's, and you know, people say, well, he holds on the ball line. Well, you held on the ball line mm -hmm. for a good reason. We mm -hmm. wanted you to have the ball. He is super efficient. Mm -hmm. His step back, if you step him back and you're trying to guard him, you foul. If not, he's going around you. Yeah. He's so strong. I, I don't know how it gets better. Right. Maybe somebody is better. I don't know, but I just don't, I haven't seen it. Well, I think Mike's the perfect coach for James. You know, a guy that can do everything the way he does, where he's going to push him, empower him, and bring the best out in him. Now you incorporate Russell Westbrook, who is another MVP, and now you have to reconcile these two great players. Well, it starts with them. They wanted to play together. So without that, there's no way right. you can. Westbrook to the basket. Lays it up in the air. A circus move by Russell Westbrook. There's so much attention on James that really, in theory, Russell should just right. kill it. Right. And you know, and he's now starting to feel more comfortable, and he's starting to play a lot better. Westbrook with hard back to the beautiful pass. Oh, these two guys, they know each other as well as anybody in the league. We live in a culture where it's like championship or bust. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do, you, do you feel, in a sense, like you're in a race here to get these guys gelling and up to speed with one another? Without a doubt. But I think you feel that every year. Because right. we all are in it to win. Everything. 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 And you try and do the best you can do. Now, whether if we don't win it or, you know, you have a career that you don't win at all, do you go home and go, God, I'm a failure? I don't think yeah. so. All right, it's time for the truth. If yes. you had to pick one player to run your system, who would it be? That's easy, James Nash. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a liar. <laughs> it's, it's, it's James Harden. James Nash. It's James I'll take a little bit of both of them. This has been amazing. Oh, Thanks, man. I always love to see you, and thank you for You're everything. You're the best, man. Hey. Thank you. All right, man. Thank you. It was great to catch up with Coach today. It's incredible to see him continually pushing and innovating. The shortest NBA starting lineup in over 50 years. His decision to go small ball with the Rockets will make them one of the funnest and most interesting teams to watch in the playoffs. With a little bit of luck, that championship might not be too far away.